Hello everybody and welcome back to part 24 of Brentford Moneyball Approach and we're just going to delve into the season review of our first season in Premier League. We'll start off with the overall best 11. As you can see a few players added to this. Omar Agic and Keane and Zamburic have become part of the team. And none of them have moved into the starting 11, just onto the bench. End of season awards, player of the year. Mateus Jensen, 57% of the votes, and Miago and Omega Agic, second and third. Goal of the season against Watford back in January from Matthias Jensen as well. Let's have a look at this. I don't actually remember this one. Free kick into the top corner. Fantastic free kick from Jensen. You can see that that was voted goal of the season. Sign-in of the season, Moise Keane. Like I said at the start of the year, we paid £35 million. That was a huge amount of money for him. But he's rewarded us 34 games, 17 goals and 2 assists. Um, very much well worth it from him. And then young player of the season, Bernardo Silva. Stats for the season. Keane, top goal scorer. Highest average rating, Matthias Jensen with that 7.23. Most assists uh, joint there between Matthias Jensen and Philippe Cruz. Best pass completion, Shandon Baptiste uh, does his well, well, very well, very reliable in the big games. Most man of the match awards, Matthias Jensen. Uh, it's clear to see he had a fantastic season. Most yellow cards, uh, way out in front, Philippe Cruz on 13. And then joint. For most red cards, three players, Norgard and Bueno and Rakeem Harper, all on one. And then this looks to be the team of the season. Ryder in goal, Thompson, Omagrag, stacking. <laughs> Thompson, Omaragic, Miaga, Cruz, making up the defensive line. Silva, Harper and Jensen in the midfield. And then the front three, Maulida, Keane and Mbwemo. And let me know down in the comments if you think that's the team of the season whether you agree with that or whether you'd see somebody else in there. The board season review, uh, we finished 7th in the Premier League, lost in the quarter final of the FA Cup and lost in the 4th round of the Carabao Cup. Uh, club visions, going into next season, let's see what these are new. Uh, continue to play possession attacking football that entertains. Try and sign players from the lower level to the domestic game. Uh, continue with our high tempo pressing football, which is what we do. Make the most of set pieces. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get rid of that. I'm not too keen on having that in there. Work within the wage budget. Sell players for a profit. Fairly standard. Three year contracts for first team players. Uh, happy with that. Expand the stadium. Um, not sure how that comes on to me, but okay. And then avoid relegation by the end of next season, and then after that, become an established Premier League team. Uh, which I think I'm going to keep that as it is. Uh, the board still want us to make the most of set pieces. See if we can get rid of that still. Nope, doesn't look like it, so we're going to have to stick with that. Squad dynamics, team leaders, Jensen, Baptiste and Ben Rama. Um, the only one I possibly see moving on over the summer is Ben Rama. Um, really going to have to have a look at the wide players because as we looked at in an earlier episode, just not getting the productivity from the wide players. And then just to finish off the season review, as you can see, Moise Keane, second goal scorer overall in the Premier League with 17 goals. Beaten only by uh, Boadu, who scored 21. Uh, so Keaton scored one more goal than Sergio Aguero. Uh, very, very happy with his involvement. Um, he did hit a few patches of uh, iffiness where he didn't score, but 17 goals, 34 games, averaging a goal every other game. Very, very happy with that. Now let's skip ahead to the summer transfers. And as you can see, brief overview, we've actually spent a net spend of 46 million and in contrast to previous transfer windows we've actually had a very busy one 
and a few standout names first one Jude Bellingham coming in from Birmingham at 27 and a half million this was a player to strengthen the centre of the midfield uh, also had a bit of youth um, with some players going out as you can see a regular starter at Birmingham last year averaging just over a tackle a game high pass percentage plenty of shots on target with 40% of them and then he also contributed with eight goals and four assists so that's the reason we brought him in uh, Adol Hammond, Harry Hare, Enzo Miller all young players as is Graham Dodds uh, another big transfer for us Edson Alvarez coming in to strengthen the centre of the defence probably in all honesty going to replace Matt Miaga uh, come in from Ajax at 18 million and as you can see regular um, 7 plus average rating across three seasons there and then high pass percentage high uh, amount of tackles per game so he was brought in to um, add some steel into the defence as well as uh, being able to be a ball playing defender so continuing to build from the back Aaron Hickey we have brought in for 11 million from Hearts this is a player that can play either side at full back so we did retain Rico Henry and Dominic Thompson on the left but then we moved on Mad Throslev uh, so Aaron Hickey will come in primarily to compete with Philippe Cruz at right back now again a regular starter for Hearts uh, not much in the way of assists I'd like to see more from him but I believe with um, the right setup and the right team we can achieve that so he contributed four assists last season uh, nearly three tackles a game pass percentage not as high as I'd like um, so probably overpaid considering the stats that he's bringing to the team but I thought the versatility was a big one and then freshening up the wings we've brought in Todd Cantwell from Norwich at 11 million uh, this was a player, yes it was in the Championship, but over the last two seasons, a uh, regular starter in the Championship as you can see, 40 odd games each season, double figures for goals each season, and 8 assists last year and 4 the previous season. So going to provide assists, goals and creativity. As you can see he's not the paciest of wingers, but he's going to add something different, um, provide a bit of creativity on that side. And then a player to shore up the defensive side of the midfield, Marco Kana, uh, just an absolute beast. Um, 28 and a half million, yes, a lot of money. Regular player for Anderlecht, uh, averaging a 7.2 and a 7.4 over previous seasons. Regular starter, provides uh, the odd goal, 7 and a 4 assists um, over two seasons. So it's these numbers here, four tackles per game, 85% of passes completed. And if you look at the previous season, uh, 3.76 and 83% possession, uh, 83 passes completed. That's the reason we've brought him in. And then the final summer transfer, we spent 17.5 million on David Brooks. And I was looking for somebody to come in on this right hand side uh, to play as the inside forward. Now, this one, uh, not necessarily gone with uh, the statistics per se on this, because as you can see, he's um, starting about half of his game. So he's, last season, he played 26 in all appearances in the league, but didn't manage to get a league goal. But he did get three assists. The season before, he scored three goals with two assists. So a bit of a gamble, but um, I think with a bit of faith, with the right training, I think he is a player that we can get a few goals out of. So yes, again, that's probably an overpayment, 17.5 million for him. But a uh, 25-year-old British player, I think even if he doesn't provide the goods, uh, he's a player that we can sell on for more money. And then looking at the players out, Johnny Mitchell and Aaron Presley, two young players that have not developed into first team players. So 
sold them to Dundee for half a million combined. Uh, the big one in goal, David Raya, going out to Southampton for 20 million. I thought he'd hit his peak. I don't think he um, was much different to Gunnison. So for 20 million, I thought we'll move him on, give Gunnison some first team appearances. And if we need to replace him next year, we will do. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Mads Roslev going out for 10 million. He wanted to transfer, so he went out. And as I mentioned, we replaced him with Aaron Hickey. Ollie Watkins really gone off the boil. Uh, just didn't really play. He played 21 games last season, but as you can see, only six of them were starts. No goals, one assist. And then even the season before that, he had his big injury and only scored four goals. So I thought it was time to move him on. So he's gone for nine and three quarters million, possibly going up to 12 million. Calder Silva, another one that's not developed, so he went on for half a million. As is Marcus Force, he's gone out to Legia Warsaw, uh, just under three million there. Luka Recic to Copenhagen for a million. And Morgensen, Drew Yearwood, two more players going out. Yearwood going on, on loan. James Bree, I uh, just thought with the competition that we've now got at right back, we can move him on and Considering he came in for less than half a million to get two and a half million, we've made a good profit on him. Uh, Saeed Ben Rama wasn't a player I was actively looking to sell, but uh, the Chinese club came in for him £20 million up front. And a player that we struggled to get the best of in the Premier League, so £20 million was welcome, uh, which went into the transfers for Cantwell and Brooks. Um, so, even for a like for like 20 million, Ben Rama and Brooks, we've made 2.5 million, gained a, a younger British player that we can probably sell on for more money. So, I think long term vision, I think that's a, a wise investment. And then two of the players from the first team going out on loan, Dervy Soglu and Christian Two. And then if I just add in the future transfers. Uh, we've got Christian Norgard, his contract was up at the end of the season, so he'll be going out in January for £5 million to Nice. So we've reshaped the squad, and I think all in all, looks a lot stronger now. And as you can see, looking down that list, we've got a lot more strength in depth. Uh, there was two uh, near misses, should we say, in the transfer um, period. We had two offers accepted by the board, one for Omar Agic, I uh, can't remember who it was, but there was a team that met his release clause of 37 million. And thankfully he stayed. The other one um, would have been a huge loss. Moyes Keane, um, probably one that we might have to look at renegotiating his contract this year. Because the team came in, offered 42 million. I think it was Newcastle actually. And I was a bit worried that he was going to go to Newcastle, even though they've just been promoted this year. So 42 million was offered, accepted by the board, but again, he turned Newcastle down to stay with us. Huge relief, because as you see, early start to the season, three goals in four appearances. And with that start to the season, the early table looks like this. As you can see, up in sixth place, 10 points from the first five games. And as we try and continue that good start to the season, we've got a game against Everton today, and the team we're going to put out for that looks like this. Gunnarsson, our new number one, starts in goal. Henry, Alvarez, Wolfenden and Cruz at the back. Kana anchoring the midfield. Jensen and new boy Bellingham ahead of him. And then Maulida, Keane and Mbwema make up the front three. And if you're liking the content, don't forget to leave a like down below. Subscribe for more Football Manager content, including the upcoming FM21 release. Uh, we'll be playing on the beta in that. Uh, I've got a save in mind for that, so subscribe to see that. And if you've got any comments, feedback, let me know down below in the comments. But Everton with the first chance of the game from a free kick. Thankfully, it's gone wide. And as we look to build out from the back now, Gunnarsson with a short free kick to Wolfenden. Out wide to Cruz, inside to Jensen. Great crossfield ball to Maulida, cutting in from this left. Finds and Bremer. 
Everton have blocked us off and get the ball clear. And we uh, somewhat half clear that with a header, but Everton pick up the loose ball. And now they come down the right hand side. And uh, we shuffle them back inside, but they've still got possession. But they've worked it again down this right hand side to Draxler. Henry can't stop the cross. And we half clear the ball. It's crossed back in. Cruz this time with another half clearance. And Everton really putting the pressure on. It's in at the back post. Thankfully they've hit the bar. And Cruz gets it behind for a corner. And we have had uh, a reasonable start to the season. As you saw, like I said, 10 points from 5 games. I'm very happy with that. Unfortunately we did lose to uh, big rivals Fulham. Uh, which was a bit of a blow. But other than that, the team generally is looking stronger across all departments, although not really showing it in this game. Um, so I think it's a good save from Gunnison there, but I think what I'm going to do is just ask for um, more from the team, because they have been showing more. And, uh, maybe it's just a bit of a slow start today against Everton, but we've got the ball here. Alvarez looking to build from the back, finds Bellingham. Nice little triangle there to Henry. Finds my leader down the line. Jensen, crossfield ball to Mbama. Shoots and it's into the top corner. Brian Mbama gets his first goal of the season. And what a goal that is. An assist by Jensen. And Mbama is off for the season. And hopefully, unlike Ben Rama, hopefully we can start seeing the best of Mbama this year. He is a couple of years younger than Ben Rama. So giving him this season. If we can't get anything out of him this season, I'll probably look to move him on. But uh, he's repaying the faith that we're showing him. Him stuck with him. He didn't have the best of seasons last year. But uh, first goal for the season for him, and hopefully he can build on that. But this time we get the ball clear. It is Embremo driving forward again this time. Unfortunately, he runs straight into uh, the Everton defence there. I'm not really sure where he was going with that. And Everton look to counter now. Henry with a good tackle. Everton pick up the loose ball again. But they've worked it in and fortunately that goes the wrong side of the post for them and the right side of the post for us. And as we come up to half time, we're uh, playing reasonably well now. As you can see, 11 shots on to in total, 4 of them on target, the majority of the possession. So if we can get a second before half time, that would leave us uh, in very good shape. Cruz gets the ball into the box. Bellingham heads it and just over the bar. Let's get into the half time. Tell them if we're happy with the performance. Keep it up. And uh, if we keep doing what we're doing, we should get the three points today against Everton. Jensen finds Mbremo again down this right hand side. Unfortunately, he loses out again. And every time Everton get the ball, they are looking dangerous. And what a save by Gunnison with his feet there. Everton looking very, very dangerous on the counter. And I think with that, rather than uh, playing as a positive mentality, I will drop back to balance just to provide uh, a little bit more caution on the defence. But we'll do our usual substitution on the hour mark. Hopefully nothing goes wrong before then. Again Everton coming forward. Still can't get the ball off them. They look to get across into the box. So far so good at stopping them. Alvarez heads the ball clear to Bellingham. And then it's played between him and Karna. Find Alvarez who brings the ball out of defence now. Jensen with another lovely crossfield ball and what a horrific tackle there from the Everton defender. Surely that's got to be a red card. Now that was a flying scissor tackle. And let's see what the referee does here. Surely that's a red. Yep, yeah, and there he goes. Jensen crosses the ball in. Pickford collects it. Nothing comes of that free kick. And I think what we'll do on the hour mark, uh, now that Everton are down to 10 men, we'll just alter our tactics slightly as well. Just try and put more pressure on them, keep the ball from them, make them work harder. 
But Maulida's in here and he's... Has he got a penalty? The referee's going over to VAR. And it is a penalty. And Moyes Keane with his third penalty of the season. He's actually missed the first two. So if he misses this, he will be off penalty duty. But he took the third one away. Third time's charm for Moyes Keane. And it's his fourth goal of the season. Very happy with that. Back on, uh, back on target for his penalties. And we'll look the positive, uh, up to positive mentality. Because Everton are now looking frustrated. We've got our players motivated and calm. What we'll do is just uh, make the passing shorter. Frequently start to waste time. Get the goalkeeper to slow the pace down. Because we don't need to be chasing the game now. And with that, we'll bring Katucci on for Keane, who, apart from the penalty, he's not having the best of games. Uh, who else have we got to bring on? Maulida's looking tired, so I think Cantwell can bring on that left-hand side. And then we'll give it 10 minutes and make the final change. But I don't expect to see much from us now in the final part of the game. If we can attack, great. If not, I'd rather just see this game out now at 2-0. Gunnarsson, long ball forward to Cantwell, finds Mbwemo switching it. Mbwemo goes for the shot again, but this time it's wide of the post. So that's positive. That's what we want to see. And 70 minutes is up, so we'll make our final substitution. And this time I think we don't need to go down to 10 men. We'll just save Rico Henry at fullback. Uh, There's no point him risking getting sent off, so that's the substitution I'm going to look to do. I'm just going to drop a final bit of praise to the team. Just spur them on for the last 10 minutes. Let's substitute Hickey, switches the ball to Embuemo from the free kick. Embuemo cuts inside, goes for another spectacular, but uh, a bit of a daisy cutter straight to the keeper. A comfortable save for the Everton keeper. Another highlight now, Karna out wide to Hickey. Inside to Bellingham, back to Karna. That's a sloppy ball back. He's uh, left Alvarez in the lurch there. Everton through on goal. Fortunately, Gunnison having another good game in goal. Keeps Everton at bay. And saves the blushes there of uh, Karna, whose poor ball back there is, uh, potentially could have cost us a goal. But we managed to get the corner clear. Tuchu finds the onrushing Embuemo. Can't get past the Everton defender, but we keep the ball up in their territory where we want it. And that looks to be job done coming into injury time. Very happy with the performance today. 2 0 win against Everton. Very happy. And if you're happy with that, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content and I think the next game we'll be back for will probably be the uh, I think we'll do the FA Cup third round game on uh, New Year's Eve and thank you very much for watching